Alright, so this skill is absolutely cracked. The only downside is that you'll lose like 10 frames while giant meteors fall from the sky. The sorcerer is a ton of fun if you like to use elemental effects, call down meteors and giant storms. Let's go. Let me know what you prefer, mage or sorcerer. All right, so how you unlock the sorcerer, you will probably may have already done it, but in case you haven't, it happens very early in the game in Fenworth. If you talk to the vocation guild leader there, he'll actually give you the quest. You'll just need to head over to the mines that he points you to the direction of. There's a chest in there that contains a staff. You'll just need to return that to him or give him any other staff of the sorcerer and you will have unlocked it. So where the mage is a backline healer, the sorcerer is really like a backline magic damage dealer. The sorcerer excels at high stamina usage spells with a long wind up time that devastate enemies their triangle skill is why they excel at this and what galvanizer does is it refreshes your stamina very quickly and because that you can essentially do this and also use your quick spell to dump all of your stamina into getting spells off more quickly you got a really nice flow to getting these damage spells off compared to a mage that you know you need to be a little bit more careful with your stamina management use some more stamina like healing items here and there but as a, a sorcerer, you don't necessarily need to because you can regen your stamina yourself. It, it, there is really like an excellent progression between like starting out as a mage with the spells and mechanics there and then moving into the sorcerer if you want to focus more on damage. The specifically AoE damage, like most of the spells for the sorcerer are AoE focused. You'll need to aim some of them by actually just lining them up. Some of them will actually like self-target like a lot of the spells do, but there is a lot of flexibility in terms of the different elemental types of damage you are doing here and because you remove the not restrictions but like the the extra flexibility that the mage has in terms of you know support spells etc this allows you to have one spell of each of the different elemental types active on yourself as a sorcerer plus then the maester skill which is just absolutely cracked there's actually two maester skills we'll cover both of them in this video but the meteoron is just insane like the meteor shower it does is just it does so much damage but we'll cover that in a little bit all right skills first thundermine is probably my favorite skill especially once you've upgraded this. Now, this conjures a ball of lightning that will essentially stand in front of you. It does knock back smaller enemies, and it's great to pop this at the start of combat when you're building up to, say, use one of these, like, longer cast time spells because they will protect you, those, like, thunder cracks as they'll, like, knock enemies back, and it's just a good damage spell to do for, like, thunder damage anyway. Sizium is really good too. I wasn't sure about this at first, but it actually is really good. Like, the physical damage it does, like, knocking enemies in the air is really good. Good. And it's also great because a lot of the sorcerer's spells are magic based. This is physical based. So if they are resistant to magic damage, you've got that option as well. Hargle is a bone chilling blizzard in the immediate vicinity. And it, it's, it triggers frostbite, which is probably the main reason you'll use it, especially on groups of enemies. Really good AOE to use this on groups of smaller enemies, even larger enemies if you can freeze them as well. Decanter, I'm a little bit hit and miss with. Now, Decanter, I originally started using it. And essentially what this does is it heals you like it saps the health from the target to heal you and damage them at first i was like yeah this is this isn't bad like it does self-target so like you can just sort of hold the spell as long as you like as well and it doesn't consume any more stamina but its damage is very hit and miss depending on resistances seemingly so it's it's a good option to run if say you're not running a mage healer or something but I wouldn't be running it otherwise for your core skills here you want to grab all the core skills the main one being quick spell we've already touched on why that's great even it's exactly the same as the the mage here because it hastens your incantation speed now the benefit here is that if you do consume all your stamina as a sorcerer you can quickly heal it back with galvanize to actually get that stamina back i actually use this while running around too actually as a sorcerer and levitate is obviously great so you can float around climb things get to these chests that are sometimes tricky to get to for your augments you will essentially grab all the sorcerer ones they're all pretty solid the mage exaltation to augment your stamina's recovery speed archer's endurance to increase your max stamina and thief's subtlety to reduce the chance of being attacked by foes are all fantastic for a sorcerer the vocation Maester. Now there's actually two and the quest line kind of starts the same as the mage. Now if you watched my mage video I did cover the other half of this as both the mage and the sorcerer maester's quests are technically linked. So watch the mage one if you want the mage stuff but for this one we're going to focus on Mirden which is the sorcerer maester and you will need to actually complete Trisha's quest as well to get the other maester skill. So we'll start with that. Now Ina's home is located to the northwest of the border watch outpost and you need 
need to go here and start her quest. When you get here, there'll be a little cutscene that'll play. You'll need to wait for her grandparents to leave. You can either pick them up and carry them outside or just like wait for that to happen, you know, just by pastime, etc. Once that has occurred, she'll give you a quest where she's looking for grimoires. Now she wants five, but you only need to bring her three. Now, if you go to the checkpoint rest town at the very top here, you'll find Mirden's home. When you arrive here, he will walk outside and be like, meh, you don't look cool. And he'll like walk back inside. You need to put on the courtly tunic and breeches for him to consider you important enough to talk to him. Once you have done that, he will then come out. He'll see you again. He'll drag you inside. He'll give you his half of the quest. You'll need to do both of these quests. And his quest is exactly the same, right? He wants five grimoires. And again, you only need to give him three. Now, these grimoires, there are multiple copies of them throughout the game of all of these. So technically, you can do it a different way and just like go out and find them. However, if you just want to find three of them and complete both of these quests, what you need to do is go back out Mirrodin's house and then climb up the rocks on the outside and jump across into the balcony and on the top here you'll find the first one of these grimoires now just grab this and then immediately leave the house do not go downstairs as he gets real mad if he finds out you snuck into his house so after you've left here you want to head to Vernworth and you may have already done this but the magistrate when he is hiding in the cell when he's locked up if you have done that quest or talk to him if you speak to him again he'll actually give you one of the grimoires that these people are looking for and then now you've got two and then you can grab a third one very easily in Melv from the vendor there. You just talk to him. He'll actually have the Fluminous Shield for sale and you can just grab that. And now you've got three. Now, because there's two of them and they both want three, what you'll need to do is actually make counterfeits. So if you go back to the checkpoint rest town and talk to the forgery guy at the scrap shop, you'll be able to make forgeries of all three of these. Now the forgeries, the three forgeries that you create after resting so that you can wait the valid time in order to be able to get them you can then just give all three of these to Mirden. now he'll then ask if you want to collect the other five you just say no and he'll then complete the quest and you'll be able to get his maester skill which is the maelstrom which is a massive whirlwind attack that wreaks havoc on the ground now this does have a huge wind up time and you can't speed it up with quick spell it is really good to cast sort of when there's a lot of enemies that are grouped together and it does deal a decent amount of damage it's just hard to actually trigger the effect consistently because enemies will often and sort of move out of its space. It happens a lot with some of these like AOE spells. The best one actually comes from Trisha. Now, if you've still got the three like real grimoires, make sure you don't actually give the real ones to mid and take the real ones to Trisha and then she'll do the same thing. She'll say, you want to collect more? You say no. And then you'll actually have to leave there and go and rest at like the campsite or just like leave, come back later, etc. Another scene will play out and to avoid any spoilers here, all you need to do is tackle her. Don't kill her, just tackle her to the ground. Then you'll need to wait for her to rest and by leaving and coming back again and then once you've done that she'll give you the meteoron maester skill which is absolutely cracked this summons a meteor shower that does an immense amount of damage in a massive range it will kill all of like your little smaller enemies basically in one shot it does an insane amount of damage to the larger like bosses that you'll find throughout the world especially in Vernworth and even once you get into Batal and beyond but it is fantastic like the meteoron is a absolutely cracked spell that I, I've been using heaps. Now, it does have a long wind-up time, but if you use those other spells, like using the Thundermine to sort of use that first, give you a little bit of protection, and then just like stand there and wait for this to go off. It, the, the cast time is really long, but the actual damage it does is so worth it. So I highly recommend using this. For best equipment for the Sorcerer, Arbor is the place you want to go. There's some great weapons and armor for both mages and sorcerers here, but there is actually, I think, one of the best staffs here in just like the Arbor Armory shop for some reason like the lion's lord archie staff it is super expensive but if you've got that money like it's magic damage here is just insane for the fact that you could just buy this in vanworth very early in the game so i highly recommend saving up for that if you are going for the sorcerer route otherwise you know just any equipment that you can get and obviously upgrade your equipment at arbor because it does do more magic increase for any upgrades that you do to there the Ring of Articulancy is definitely a good one to run to slightly reduce the time taken to encant spells. Otherwise, any ring that boosts your magic, or I'm using the Ring of Triumph here to boost my max stamina, my max carry weight, and my max health, but really it's up to you. As long as you've got the Articulancy ring on, you should be fine. A couple of tips to close us out here. Use Levitate outside combat to access chest and inside combat to reposition. So 
you don't take damage from things that are attacking you you can sort of climb away from them you need at least one melee fighter or warrior in your party preferably two to keep the pressure off you the two me command can be super valuable for that as well so that you can use that to have them come and protect you and i said this in my mage guide but carrying stamina food is really relevant here because you can instantly refresh your stamina if you do run out but it's less important as a sorcerer because you've got galvanized it's just in case you sort of you're about to like immediately run out and you fall into that animation where you just like lay on the ground for five minutes waiting for your stamina to regen you can quickly use that to give yourself a little bit more to skip that animation but let me know your thoughts in the comments down below guys thank you guys for watching this sorcerer video till the end thank you to our members for supporting the channel my name is Noiser. i hope you have a great day